We actually serve all of Ontario, so we target the First Nations communities, and a lot of our learners are adults that are working because FNTI delivers our, our programming in an intense professional mode delivery, which means that our learners can stay in their communities, work in their communities, but they come out for a week, you know, basically once a month, and they're in a program. But then they can go back to their communities and continue their responsibilities, whether it's with family or work or community responsibilities. And so a lot of our learners are, are adult learners. Um, we have a few that will come directly out of high school into our aviation program um, because that is sort of a direct entry and it is a full-time program where they're here, they live in the community, we have a residence and they become pilots after three years. We, we actually have um, graduates in 86% of the communities in Ontario. 86%. 86%. Wow. And, uh, and then we have graduates from across Canada in our aviation program because they come from all over. That, that program is, um, attracts um, young First Nations people from, from across Canada. And we don't just have like, um, you know, transition programming or anything. We actually have certificate, diploma, um, bachelor's degrees, and graduate degree programs. We have the full range. And then we also have a three-year technology program, a First Peoples Aviation program. And it's the only one in Canada. The only one in Canada. It's the only one in Canada. <laughs> Honestly, we've been talking a lot about this because in our communities um, and because our learners usually have commitments, our goal is really to create social entrepreneurs, you know, where they're coming out, they're getting their diplomas and their degrees, but they're going back into the communities and creating change. And so by having their degrees, by, by empowering them to, to make change, they're going back and creating change in their communities. And it can be social change, it can be economic change, but we see where they're actually having impact in the communities. And there isn't anywhere that you can go really in Ontario now that they don't know of FNTI. Like we've been doing this for 35 years, I think. <laughs> Everything is around the learner, everything. It's about transforming the learner. When you come into FNTI, we use indagogy as our base of, of learning. It's, it's an indigenous approach to teaching and, and assisting people to learn. It's, um, you know, there's circles, we use traditional practices, and, um, and people transform. So we're trying to educate them not only in, you know, sort of skills that they need to, to do the job, if that's their goal is to, for employment, but it's about change for them, transforming them, re rediscovering who they are as an Indigenous person. And so we tie that right into the curriculum. They see themselves in the classroom through their, their instructor, because most of their instructors have gone through, you know, systems to teach them, and but they, they bring back the knowledge and they share with the learners, and the learners transform through them learning about themselves. And, and we encourage that. We encourage the healing because the trauma that's happened in our communities. So we encourage them to, to unburden those things. And, and we have teams of people around them that support them through that transition. Like a mainstream system you know, of education, which I went there too, you don't have that support system around you. You don't have a community built around you. Where in the classroom, we, we develop it like a family. So you have your support systems, you have your elders in the classroom. Um, you have your instructor who's sharing their experiences. We also approach the education model from, from the fact that they're adults. And even if they're 19 years old, they're still an adult who has had an experience. And so we bring those experiences back into the classroom. So we really develop like those principles of, of understanding that they're not there just to be, you know, for us to dump information on, that they bring something to the classroom. And it's considered real-time learning. They come in for a week. They learn the things they're learning, they share the things they're sharing, but they go back into their community and they actually get to actualize it. And then they bring back the next time and they do circles to, to really understand where they're at as individuals. So our graduation rates can be anywhere from 85 to 95 percent. 95 percent. Yeah, we've had years where we've had that kind of success. We've had small numbers during those years, uh -huh. but it's been that kind of success. There are other years where it's a little lower, right? Mm -hmm. but, uh, but you don't see that in mainstream. You just don't see that, especially with Indigenous learners. You don't, because they don't see themselves in those systems. And I don't want to sort of criticize the Western systems, but they're designed, their curriculum is designed to really, um, in a way that doesn't 
respect and honor our worldview. You know, they're all designed to to take you through, you know, and get you at the end of the day to be in, a, in an economic model. You know, you're a cog in the wheel, you're, you're an employee. Um, and we're not about that. I mean, we want our people to be strong, healthy, whole again, so they can be contributing to the economy. But based on their own terms, not not you know conditioned to go through and be a cog in the wheel and forget about your emotions, forget about you know your your heart, forget about spirit. I mean you know you can't be connected to people. It's it, but in here we really develop everything like a family, and and support people through their through their challenges and our institute and our programming here is all about supporting that learner to to help them feel comfortable with sharing and, and no, not knowing and then rediscovering these things. And so, you know, I think it is important that we're designing new curriculum right now. Mm -hmm. I was explaining before we started filming. We're working on like creating foundational pieces and we're using like knowledge systems that are, well, we're working with Haudenosaunee knowledge right now. But I've already done this before in my degree development. I took indigenous knowledge, developed a health program and walked people through like a certain design in the, in the way the curriculum was designed. And then we took it to the Anishinaabe and said, hey, this is, this is what we're trying to create. Can we use the same, you know, foundational pieces and create the same outcomes using Anishinaabe knowledge? Yes, it worked because the value systems were the same. Then I took it to the Mapuche in Chile and said the same thing. And they went through, yeah, we can put this in there, this in there, the, the same value base. And they were able to do the same thing. Because indigenous knowledge around the world is the same. You know, the concepts, the values, the principles of the earth are all the same. So we designed all of our programming, our new programming, based on that. And, and that's what we need. People, it's not just about our own people, it's about the human race. Like, we need people to understand that the current knowledge systems that we're using are destroying us as human beings. And so FNTI is working on hopefully transforming our understanding of our relationships. Like that's what we want to create. And we're, we're targeting our communities because we want to build our communities and, and re, rediscover who we are, but also reclaim who we are. And then hopefully we can influence this world in, in their understanding about human life and the continuance of life. If we continue the way we're going, we're not gonna see life continue, so. That's, that's my vision for where we're going with education. Like, we've got to transform people's thinking around all of this and their hearts. <laughs> we do measure our success. We, we're working right now actually on a matrix to look at wellness indicators, to actually look at the well-being of our students and where they're at when they come in and then how they are when they leave. Um, so the transformation experience is important to us. We haven't figured out exactly how to measure that, but we know our students transform and they say it, you know, at the end, I'm not the same person as what I was when I came in here. So, so that's a way that we actually try to capture that and, and say, yeah, we've, we've done a good job. Um, not all our students graduate, but most of them do come back in the end. You know, they leave for whatever reasons and we support them when they have to leave. You know, if there's family issues or whatever, we support them, but we never lose track of them. And then we bring them back in at some point, a lot of times. In order to really be successful as a human being, no matter what you're doing in life, you have to know yourself. You have to be able to um, have emotion, to feel, you know? And so we encourage that growth, that personal growth. We support it and we encourage it um, because, you know, we have a lot of traumas and even if it didn't, the person coming in didn't experience it, it's generational. So the results of that trauma, we still see them, right? The, the patterning and things. So we have support systems and people who are trained to identify those things and to help them walk through those things without forcing anyone. I mean, it's all personal choice. But um, but we definitely move them from where they are to a different place, mm -hmm. and and always in a positive way. Some some you know are resistant, you know, even though they know they're transforming and they're changing. Some people come in and they're very resistant, but usually within the first couple courses. <laughs> By the time they come back, you know, around the, the third, so getting closer to the Christmas time, they're, they're usually ready to, okay, I'm gonna embrace this, because they can't seem to just leave <laughs> and not come back. So, um, 
you know, once you kind of get that family feeling and that sense that these people I can trust, then they, yeah. And it's interesting too when you bring a cohort together because some of them never met each other before, right? And they all come from different places, some more dysfunctional than others, but they come together and they see themselves. Nobody's story is really any different from the next person. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit changed in terms of the, the, the events or whatever, but they still have the same kind of feeling, the same kind of emotion around it. So, so they say, wow, okay, I'm not alone. And that has huge impacts in their learning. And so these new programs that we're working on really are about that first and then taking them into the skill sets. Because a solid person, you know, um, can do any job. You know, seriously, like, it's not hard to learn skills. Like, to, you know, it's hard to really have confidence and hard to, to feel secure and feel safe and to, to, to know who you are as a human being. That's harder. So that's what we work on. Because then when they're ready to go out, they're ready to be employed and, or, you know, do their job better. So they don't have their credentials. So they come in and they gain the skills, but they also gain the strength to take it even further, right? To, to really apply things and make change. So that's a part of the success too, is that they come, they get the skills that they can advance even more change in their communities. And so, um, so we watch that and we, you know, they're here for a specific th reason. Usually they're coming in to get their diploma but <laughs> or degree, but then they go back and they're actually taking more back. What makes excellence? Our knowledge systems, our own people delivering it, um, the support systems, um, the development of, of um, well, the, not the development, but the opportunity for unburdening, to, to share our stories, um, the comfort level in the classroom, experiential learning, you know, allowing for, um, for language, for culture, for cultural practice, um, you know, having the opportunity to experience who we are. Um, our, le our learnings were not just about sitting in a classroom and, and being told things. It was really about transfer through, through experience, through being shown, through it was more fluid. So that's what creates excellence. Through doing. Through doing. In our own knowledge systems and our education systems. You know, our language and our culture are all on a different worldview, and it has to be reflective in our education models. And if our worldview world view is not there, it, it's just taking us down that same path that we've been on for years, hundreds of years. And so it's, it's stressful. <laughs> and there's reciprocity in our classrooms. There has to be reciprocity. It's not all one way. It's got to be going back and forth because you're developing a relationship. So, And in order to have success with that student, you have to have that reciprocity. You have to respect and honor them. So there's a few key things. Um, and we mentioned one, that anybody can come into our institute that's Indigenous. Mm -hmm. Like, we want to open the doors so that people can come here, that, that's, that there's no barriers. I think, um, you know, that Indigenous education is taught in our own ways, in our own understandings, that we use our own knowledge systems. Um, and that they're respected, honored, you know, um, validated, and that we have more Indigenous people out there graduated that are that are whole, solid people in their own identity, in their own um, abilities, that their gifts are recognized. That's the goal for the next 10 years, and that we're creating change in our communities, that we see um, healthy, whole, solid communities again. <laughs> And it's going to take generations to repair the damage that's been done, you know. And so we want these people that are coming in now, our people coming in now, to feel solid. So they're teaching their children how to be whole human beings. And I said, if we want to influence the well-being of our children, we've got to have that solid foundation with, these, um, with our adults that are coming in. So that's our goal. It's going to take time. So we've got to start now. These young kids have a lot to deal with right now, you know, and, uh, and the issues that we're facing are not going to be easy, so, yeah.